Welcome back. Now, that conversation around the leadership of the National Assembly has been going back and forth, um, even though in the Constitution it said that they will be allowed to select their own leadership from amongst themselves. There have been speculations and permutations to what region, to what zone, um, and indeed some have reached out to party leaderships, different party leaderships to say support this, support that, even the president-elect say, hey, this is who we think he should go to. And there's been that um, unconfirmed reports that the support hasn't given to a particular zone and to a particular individual. But we're not saying anything here. We're just we're asking questions. Is it really necessary, the back and forth about the leadership of the National Assembly? Is that what should be focused on instead of what would they be going in there to do? What laws, what bills are they going to be proposing? What area of the Constitution would they be thinking to, to get amended? What side of the Electoral Act would be... What exactly are they going there to do to help Nigerians enjoy the democratic process and governance that they are all looking forward to. Well, to help us answer all of these questions, we have here in the studio a former chairman, House of Representatives Committee on Rules and Business, former chairman, Senate Committee on Rules and Business, Emeritus Advisor to the President of National Assembly Matters, Senate, former governorship aspirant, APC, Aquaibom State 2023. Join us to welcome Senator Ita Enan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you I very almost much. applauded when he said, please join us. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> oh, well, but it's good to see you. It's been Thank a while. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a while. Thank you very much. How are you doing, sir? I was in the trenches. In and the I, trenches? Yeah, and, I, and we're out again. And you look like you're, you're relaxed. <sighs> what a relief. Relief? In a short while. For a short while. <laughs> Why a short while? Why do you say it's a short while? For the short while that I have been off. Okay. Yes. Okay. But let's look at this matter. And for one who's been, I mean, nationals, you've been in the National Assembly from the House of Representatives and chairing the Senate, I mean, the Committee on Rules and Ethics. Rules and Business. Rules and Business. Both at the House of Representatives level, the Green Chamber and the Red Chamber. Okay. So you would understand exactly what should be yeah, going by the laws of the land. Yeah. So why do we need this back and forth? What do you call the back and forth? The, we are supporting this person, give it to this person, give it to that person. When it is stated in the Constitution, and you will know the Constitution better, that they will select their leadership from amongst themselves. Yeah. It, it, it paints a picture of there's not supposed to be an interference from outside. Allow them to choose their leadership amongst themselves. Is that what the law says? It doesn't just paint a picture. It is the true position. And uh, whatever is going on in the political space now is nothing strange. Nothing strange because under the Constitution, under the standing orders, it is still the members who will choose their leaders from amongst themselves mm. and it is only their votes but the political parties in power will always want to pre pre play the role of balancing balancing in terms of ensuring that if the president comes from this block of the country the vice president comes from the other block of the country the senate president who is the third in in in, in hierarchy in protocol and in command, uh, let me use the word advisedly, in the country should come from another side to balance it. The speaker who is number four should come from the other side. The deputy senate president who is number five or six should come from the other side and then the, speaker, the deputy speaker should come from the other side. Because these are the highest influencing people and they, there are six geopolitical zones of the country and it's always intended to make sure it balances. Again, it is always intended that if you don't do that, you may have the opposition parties is always very active also, trying to make sure that they produce or they frustrate you. Even if they don't produce, even if they don't frustrate, they make sure you sweat so that you know that there is the opposition party and that the opposition party. An opposition party, like we had the AD at that time and the NPP, APP at that time, they had almost always come together to ensure that they frustrate the PDP what was in government at that time. And uh, even if they don't frustrate, they make sure you sweat. So it is nothing uh, absolutely uh, unusual. But 
Finally, the decision as to who become the speaker or the Senate president or the deputy or in, in, either, in each of the cases will definitely come from amongst their members. So, <clears throat> while the, we're talking about the parties seeking to exert their, to ensure that whatever goes on in there works in their favor, what happens to the wishes of the people that the legislators are there to, re to represent? That is the electorate general. The electorate general. The electorate had surrendered, have surrendered their power and their vote to the members elect and the senators elect. Mm. And so the member who will be the senator who the senator elect who will be voting to choose a Senate president or a deputy Senate president or a speaker or the deputy speaker is exercising the power which had been conferred on him by their people and which has been confirmed by the Independent National Electoral Commission through the certificate of return. So would it be wrong for them to find out from the constituents what they would want or who they would want before going there to vote instead of depending on what the party or the leadership of the party tells them? I, 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 I think that rarely happens, but I want to think that they would each do that. But then at this stage, they have been asked, they have been asked to represent. And at that time, they have not been sworn in, you know. So I think they will still consult their people. But then they are coming on the platform of the party. They will have to listen to, they will have to relate and consult with the party to make sure they have a balance. But at the same time of listening and consulting with the party, the party should ensure that you have their agreement, you have their understanding, you have their buy-in, because no matter the level of zoning you do, the level of choosing you do, it is the level of consultation, in-house agreement, the level of persuasion, and uh, buy-in, of the senators elect and members elect that will produce the ultimate person. Because if you do not, and the, and the party, in taking a decision one way or the other, will have to consult with them in advance. Now the members elect. The members elect now. And then you find out what is their preference. You found out what is the constitutional provision. You, found out, you find out what is their leaning. You find out who is it that has the kind of content, let me use the word content, in all particulars, that they will, that the members will want. And then, but also you can make a general uh, appreciation of them by saying, look, this one has gone here, this one should go here, this one, and you seek their opinion. And if you don't do that, you will have the um, the Tambua Mulikat situation, or you'll have the Dogara situation. And if you are not tactical enough, you will have the Saraki Ekweramadu 2 0 situation. <laughs> oh, well, this is interesting you say it's 2 0. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, I was just, you know, first and foremost, I disclosed to you that, you know, uh, this conversation, you find out eventually that these people will pick if who they eventually want to pick. Yeah. Um, you know, we can only uh, permutate and wonder where it is. What I also find very interesting, I mean, on my way to to the city this morning, I found out that oh, there are some lawmakers who are also putting up banners. Uh, you know, on the streets, and I'm wondering to what end <laughs> are, are Nigerians going to be voting in this thing? Who precisely are they trying to appeal to? Is this the general public, or is it uh, their fellow members who they think might be, you know, who might be saying this? Why do members do that? Because I would have thought that if you're if you're lobbying, your lobby will be within the region of the National Assembly. If the banners were around the National Assembly complex, I would not be surprised. But for it to be outside. Um, on the streets, uh, it's very interesting what is going on in Abuja. For those who, who are wondering what I'm talking about, um, on the streets of the city, um, as if we were still in the campaign season, yeah. uh, you know, there, there are thoughts flying to my head. What exactly is this about? Are we the ones voting for these people? Isn't uh, isn't this a isn't this an internal affair um, of would be members of the National Assembly? Yeah, the, it, it, it's not abnormal because some of the senators and members elect are coming from different constituencies or senatorial districts in the country. 
and most of them have not met themselves. And most of them are new, and they may not know the faces you are talking about. That's number one. Number two, most of these uh, adverts are not put up by the senators elect or members elect by themselves. They are put on by supporters. You know, persons who think that this is what they will do. You know, when we're campaigning, uh, you'll, when we're campaigning, you'll see some of your supporters or a group of people picking up the bills of your billboard in a particular area, particular a particular senatorial district. And when you come, there will still be some of your supporters who think they are doing you a favor by putting up your billboard. But of course, I think that it is not abnormal because when even when we came and were campaigning for Senator David Mark, you know, to for a second term, mm -hmm. it was still necessary because there are persons who may not have been familiar with Senator David Mark. But of course, you just have to excite the political space. That's basically what it is about, yeah, exciting, exciting the, poli the political yes. space. I mean, because some people say we've had enough of excitement. Yes. <laughs> the, the election season gave us more than Exc maybe an over overdose, overdose of ex yes. excitement. Yes. We're trying to get rid of that now. But take a look at what is currently happening. I mean, yesterday I listened to a uh, uh, data analyst, Babajiri Ogunson, we'll talk about how it has gone down in previous assemblies, uh, the permutations in terms of uh, when the president is from a certain region, uh, his vice president is from the other uh, region. And then the, I think, let me just be very specific. He says when the president is from the north, yeah. oftentimes we've seen that the Senate president will it's also be from the north. The north. Um, and when the president is from the south, oftentimes we see uh, the Senate president is also from the south. He also said that there were exceptions. We've seen exceptions to the rule where uh, during the time of uh, President Goodluck yeah. Jonathan, uh, Senator David Mark continued to remain Senate president. So. Uh, this time around, it does appear that the APC is zoning this to the south. The question is, where in the south? We've seen uh, lawmakers from the southeast of the country saying, for the sake of balance and for the sake of giving everyone a sense of belonging, uh, that it should go to the southeast. Uh, the south-south is also saying, look, we gave the APC perhaps the highest number of votes we've ever given in, in any recent election, and so they also rightfully deserve uh, the the Senate presidency. Tell us how this is eventually decided. What really plays a role in terms of parties settling for the regions that produce so the Senate president or the Speaker of the National Assembly? Sometimes you could have a situation that um, you that the party, but it, it's been like a custom, unwritten convention. Mm -hmm that wherever you have the Senate president go to, I mean the president of the country, the Senate president goes to the other block, goes to the same block that is between the north and the south. We, we saw in the good luck, in the uh, Basanjo area era, that the south-south had the deputy speaker, the southeast had the uh, Senate president throughout all the period, uh, the two terms, and um, the north had the uh, vice president, it also had the speaker, and it also had the uh, deputy president of the Senate, which was soon to the North Central at that time. Now, this time is almost all the same, because the president-elect is from the Southwest. The president, the Senate president, is oscillating. I, I have seen um, permutation zoning it to the South. South. I haven't seen a statement written by the party but of course it shouldn't because at this time, whatever the party does, the opposition and though they are grieved within the uh, ruling party will want to capitalize it and form an alliance to present the, uh, uh, the, uh, the other situation I, 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 I described as 2-0, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I think that what the party has done is to throw the kite push it out to the, to, to the public, it has, it has permeated, it has, it has um, direct, it has uh, done a, a pointer that the Senate President should go to the South, South, South. It has also done a pointer that the, speaker speak, the Deputy Speaker should go to the South East. Also done a, a pointer that the Senate President, Deputy Senate President, should go to the Northwest, and the 
deputy and Speaker. the speakership should also go to the northwest. I seem north to... Northwest or north central? Northwest, I seem to hear. But I am of the opinion that it is inappropriate and it's difficult to uh, firm up because I know our party is always just and trying as much as possible to balance the interest of all parts of the country. Although it hasn't happened in the present, because in the present, the Southwest has the vice president and it also has the, the speaker. You know, it has number two and has number four. But then that was when we, because of the pool of the APC, almost unchallenged pool of the APC there. And there was the, um, there may not have been, I don't want to say there wasn't, um, enough to gather support for Southeast for speakership at that time. And again, there were the decision of the members on the floor that I don't want to justify anything. Now, I just want to tell the party if what, the, if what I have read, because nobody has signed that statement, and the uh, national chairman of the party, have, I have not heard it from his mouth that this is what the national working committee of the party has decided. I think what is done now may just be like political kite, you know, seeing how it, they, they're uh, trying to measure the reverberations, you know. I haven't heard him say that the deputy, the speakership should go to the northwest because you cannot, it will not be appropriate to keep the north central vacant. It will be most appropriate, very appropriate, to give the northwest deputy president of the Senate and give the North Central speakership, you know. I, the, in the last election and the last one or two elections, the North Central have always said, look, we are like, we are bat like or something, that in the North, we've got challenges. With the South, we have challenges. And that is why they went to form what they call Southern and Middle Belt Forum, to make sure that Sometimes when their interest is not, is not protected in the other block, their interest should also be protected, should again be protected by this other block. So you, it, is, it will not be appropriate, and I will want to urge a party, that if they have firmed up the North West for Deputy President of the Senate, which I think it will be appropriate, they should please give the North, North Central the speakership. I will, I'm not in a position to challenge the party. Mm -hmm. I'm a party loyal member. And, but then the party should think and reason again that the members will and can sit among themselves and say, look, let the president go here and go here. And then say, look, they have obeyed you here. They will want to take a decision that is just to the country here. After all, it is there, the members, that will go back home and take the backlash of their people. Mm. And it will be difficult to tell members and senators from um, Taraba, which I'm correct, Letu, Nasarawa, uh, Benue, Kogi, uh, uh, Kwara, and Niger, that they went and voted for South South for Senate President, South East for Deputy Speaker, then Northwest for Deputy Senate President, and again Northwest for uh, Speaker. What did you bring back home? So let the party think that the members who are going to vote on the floor, who explanation to their people at home, not just bringing back one of the offices, but why did you go to do such injustice to the other people? These are the things that the party should think, should consider and reconsider mm -hmm. in firming of their positions. Well, it's a good thing that you have already, you know, stated what you think in terms of how, what you're hearing that the party, that's your party has done so far. Which I've not firmed up. Yes, I want to, I want yes, to be but, but you haven't, um, you know, told us how these positions are decided. Uh, what are the factors that really play an influence? If these positions have been zoned according to what you're hearing, even though you say it's not confirmed, what are the factors that have decided that? Um, in something as contentious, a role as contentious as that of the Senate president, and you can see the amount of lobbying going into that particular role, 
what should be the ultimate decider in knowing whether it should go to the South South or the Southeast? Do votes count? Does balance count? What precisely counts? The votes you delivered to the party in the election counts. The number of people who are likely to vote for that particular office on the floor of either the Senate or the House of Representatives counts. And the total tally of political balancing or what is just counts. The, the members themselves, the senators elect and honorable members elect, will also have, there is a principle that we have on the floor of the Senate and the House of Representatives. And the principle is that whenever, when you come on the platform of the party, and you step on the green carpet of the House of Representatives as a member, your party dissolves and you become a Nigerian. Your oath becomes to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and your party, with the greatest respect, takes a second role. Whenever you step your feet, whenever you step your foot on the uh, red carpet of the chamber of the Senate, your party dissolves. Your party takes a second role. The, federal, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria takes precedence, and doing justice to all takes precedence. You know, so these are all the things that will will bear on the floor, on, on the on the mind of members, and that, and of course, the fact that whenever and wherever they vote and produce, they still have to account to their people back home what they have done, how just it is, not just to themselves or to their block, but how fair and just they have been to the other parts of the country. Because if you are not fair to that part of the country, you'll have to face some kind of repercussion in terms of security crisis, in terms of either food crisis, in terms of political instability, in terms of uh, agitation from even outside, you know, not the uh, uh, clock card kind of... Uh, uh, protest because those placard kind of protesters, they're just hired from uh, Gariki and they're not actually the people who protest. <laughs> they're simply um, commercial, uh, commercials. You, you know, the, there's something you said, that our colleague in um, Lagos will uh, have some questions for you, but there's something you said here that does not exactly, well, I mean, if you put it against what you had said earlier about what the party wants, what the leadership of the party wants, and what actually plays out in the house or in, in the chambers. Mm -hmm. You said when you step into any of the chambers, the party and everything the party has, so to speak, said, dissolves. You are now a Nigerian representing the citizens of Nigeria. If that be the case, and the constitution tells us that a president and deputy officer shall be elected by the members of the house amongst themselves. From amongst themselves. From amongst themselves. How does that play as against what the party wants? Because they've been instructed by their party, go yeah. for this person, go for that person. And Malpe asks a question, what criteria would be used when it comes to voting? But you just said that, that one of the rules says, when you step in here, Forget your party. You're not in Nigeria. No, it's not a rule. It's, it's not, not a, rule. a rule. It's not in the, the, in, the, in the Constitution. But it's a it's given. Not it's a given. And it is, you first take the oath of allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the Constitution. Okay. You know, that is that. But that, that, not that you are not bound by your party, because after all, you will take your role according to the party. You know, but we saw a situation that, um, that whether a political, whether a people vote for that political party or not, when you are doing appropriation, you have to provide for that area, although they did not vote for them, because they have a representative on the floor, you know. And um, not that your party doesn't really matter, because the party will also want to make sure it exerts influence. It exerts influence, you know. We had um, Bajabia Miller, you know, when he came in as a minority leader, as it were. He, he, he was a minority from the minority party, but he always made sure that the, the, the party and what his party wants plays, and plays out very seriously, even if it doesn't succeed. But you know, say, just make you know, say, we don't come, <laughs> you know. So members will still want to, uh, if they don't cause anything, they can cause a statement that the proceeding doesn't go on. You know, so mm. that is what the parties are supposed to do. That's what minority parties are supposed to do. Today, that party has transformed to become a majority party, and what, and they're now facing it from PDP and others. So, all I'm saying is that 
Not that the party doesn't really matter, but you are bound to give precedence, great precedence and great attention to the uh, provisions of the Constitution and doing justice to all. Mm. The part, what they will also have to consider is what they call ranking, you know, in terms of choosing whether you we've come back a first time or second time, and uh, whether you have experience in managing the floor. Because to be a Senate president or a speaker, you must have been able to manage, you must have managed crisis before, mm -hmm. or you must have been part of a crisis before. You must have s sat on this side before you want to go up to sit on the other side so that you know how this side feels, you know what we call the policy of the floor, the temperature of the floor, political temperature of the floor, and the temperament of the floor. Let's flip over to Lagos. I know I was wanting to get a question through. Well, thank you, uh, Marquay. Just a quick one, uh, Senator. Uh, first of all is the issue of zoning. Every time we talk about zoning, uh, I'm wondering if there is a legal position or a legal um, validation for that zoning thing because uh, we all know for those who know uh, those who do not know may also learn that this whole idea of zoning started in 1993 uh, when during the pre constitutional amendment process uh, it was prom uh, you know suggested by the former president former vice president Alex Akwame under the Abacha government at the time is there anywhere in our law books that says okay it is valid. We have six geopolitical zones. It is recognized, or is there a legal position, a legal validation for six geopolitical zones in Nigeria? Yeah, there is. There is. Um, um, I think there are many laws that talk about it. Even the standing orders of the Senate has said in Order 3, Rule 2, 4, that First, I think I will, please let me just take a little bit of it. He says, nomination of senators to serve as presiding officers and appointment of principal officers and other officers of the Senate or on any parliamentary delegation shall be in accordance with the ranking of senators. In determining ranking, the following order shall apply. Senators returning based on number of times re-elected, senators who had been members of the House of Representatives, senators elected as senators from the first, for the first time. Number four, the appointment of senators as chairman and members of committees shall be carried out in such a manner as to reflect the six geopolitical zones of the country, and there shall be no predominance of senators from a few Geopolitical zones. Well, Senate, um, the, the reason I raised that. The selection of Senate President shall my, be apologies, my apologies. My apologies. What that, is content? Yeah. My yeah. apologies. The reason I raised that is: is it constitutional? I I don't know if I've seen it in the, the current constitution, even as uh, with all the amendments. How valid is it if it is not cons if it's not in the constitution? Well. Well, if, it, if, if we say that we, it is not valid because it's in, the, it's in the Constitution, then one part of the country can afford to take president and vice president and then tell the other part of the country you don't matter. Again, it, if it were not constitutional, there are things that we take that are conventional and, more, and, and stronger than Constitution. It, was, it would have been possible for the North to again take the presidency because they may have uh, some vote for that political party to make it win one way or the other, that is according to the permutation that was brought out, but it wouldn't be. But it wouldn't bring peace. You know, but the northern governors under the uh, Progressive Governors Forum said, look, all those we can, let us, let us um, not take, let us zone the presidency to the south and let the south mm. oscillate between southwest Southeast, South, South. Well, and Senator, you saw that in the in the contestation. Yes. You saw the Southeast contest, Southwest contest, and the uh, South, South contest, and the uh, His Excellency, uh, the President elect Asiwaju Tinubu won the nomination and as one or two won the, Senator, the election. My, my sincere apologies. Uh, <laughs> it, it would seem like uh, you know we just I'm just raising issues that are relevant. The reason for this question is how significant has it been in the welfare of the people, the the lifestyle of the people so far? It would seem like this whole zoning arrangement is more for political interests as opposed to governance interests because there are those who are wondering in the various zones that have occupied any of the positions, the six major positions that you've listed. They're wondering how has that position really 
affected their lives or brought governance or any seeming significance, rele significant relevance to their lives simply because their, their kinsman is the president of the Senate or deputy speaker of the House? Well, this is um, what you need to uh, interrogate the holders, or the occupants of those offices, because it's intended that they ought to be of great influence in their zones. If we are creating five, six universities, you don't allow the Senate president to take all to his state, for instance. And if this is, uh, if there are uh, institute or other things, you have to sit and balance because the president is almost always sitting with the Senate president, the speaker, the vice president. If the vice president is from the southwest, as it is, then you have to make sure that Whatever things are shared, you are the number two citizen. You make sure you balance the southeast. Make sure they balance the southwest. Make sure you balance the south south. Make sure also that there is justice for the uh, north central. And the president is from the north. It is intended that yes, you are president for all over the country, but your people will also ask, what were you able to bring? I, I, I go away from the executive. You are in, in the legislature. The powers of the presiding office officers over budget of the country is enormous. It is almost inestimable. It is almost inestimable. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is so overriding because the way budget is run, although wrong, wrongly, after the budget is passed on the floor, I'm sorry to say this on, on air. In fact, I'm not sorry. <laughs> if, we are done, if we are not happy about it, let us change it and make sure that it comes to the real position. After budget is passed, the frame is passed, the figure is passed. A lot of other inputs goes in to accommodate the presiding officers, good, to accommodate the principal officers, next, and to accommodate chairman of committees, next. It is at that time that some other inputs are done. Don't go again to talk of the budget of the agencies and budget of the parasatals. If you go to, um, to um, the FEMA, Federal Road Maintenance Agency, you will see the impact that principal officers or presiding officers have had in the budget of those adult institutions in their own area and zones on states specifically. You will see the impact they have had. If you go to uh, the uh, central bank, Go to Communications Commission. Go to Port Authority. Go to most of these great A parastatals. You see, you'll see the in fact that the chairman of those committees have had in inputs in the budget of those injured, which do not, does not come to the floor. You will also see the impact it will have then. If you come to when we pass the budget or when we pass the Niger Delta Development Commission, you know, in 1999-2000, in you know. The, 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 the presiding officer, the deputy speaker then, had to ensure that the part of the thing that we put in the law, or where it was, with the influence of the governor, was made to be in Port Harcourt. You understand? So these are, this is why that each of these presiding Senator, officers is necessary and each of them has to protect their region Senator, that they are blocked. Senator, I'm uh, we, sorry if I've gone too we, far. We will definitely have to bring you back to explain how this plays out because at the end of the day, what the Nigerian citizens are looking for is to see a budget that will cover their welfare as well, but that hardly comes out. Their representatives don't seem to cater to that part of the welfare of the citizens, because if you ask now, how much of the budget is spent on each citizen of Nigeria? We may not be able to get that data. So we'll definitely bring you back, but I want to thank you so much for coming in this morning to talk about the leadership of the 10th National Assembly. Senator Itai Angle, former chairman, House of Representatives Committee on Rules and Business, former chairman, Senate Committee on Rules and Business, Emeritus Advisor to President Mahmoud Bari on National Assembly Matters Senate, and former governorship aspirant, Aquaibom State APC 2023. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much, and thank you. We look forward to seeing you again. Sunrise Daily will be back in a moment. Do stay with us.